Okay, so we got some exciting news just the other day. Affinity 1.8 launched across all of Affinity's different product lines. And so that includes Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and Affinity Publisher. And there's a bunch of new features, and I'll probably go over some of them as we go along throughout the year. But right now, I just want to talk about the most exciting one, which is InDesign file support for Affinity Publisher. And specifically, this is IDML files, which are compatibility files in InDesign. And so one of the major complaints about Affinity Publisher since it came out, and something that many people have commented on my videos in Affinity Publisher, is that they can't take files from InDesign and take them into Affinity Publisher, even though we've been able to do that with files for Adobe Illustrator into Designer and for Adobe Photoshop into Affinity Photo. And so this is a big deal for IDML files to be able to come into Publisher. But I want to see how this actually works and does it work and will it be usable for people. So let's go ahead. I'm in Affinity Publisher here. I've updated to 1.8. So I should be able to open IDML files now. I'm going to come up here and go to File and Open. As you know, I haven't been using Adobe InDesign very much at all lately, but I did find an IDML file from an old portfolio that I made. And so I'm going to go ahead and open this up and see what happens when we do that. And if you're not familiar with IDML files in Adobe InDesign, you can export those as part of your packaging. So when you go in InDesign and you choose to package, you automatically get an IDML file with that. And that helps you to move into older versions of InDesign that might not have all the features of whichever version of InDesign you were using. And so it has some protective features. And so that is probably why they've chosen to make that the way to bring it into Affinity Publisher instead of making it just an INDD file. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to click open. And it says it's loading up here at the top, loading one document. And let's see, document contains missing fonts. So it looks like it's missing Minion Pro because that is an Adobe font. And so, of course, it's not here. So interesting. I can then go to Font Manager. And I can choose to replace that with whatever font I want. So that's kind of what you would expect. So let's just say... Well, the default's probably fine. So we'll just say close that. So let's look and see what we've got here then. So it looks like we've got um, our text. And let's grab a type tool, see if we can get into our text. And we can. We can make changes to it. Great. And let's go look at what some of our images are like. So grab my regular tool here. And it looks like this is coming in as regular image. It's a picture frame, so it looks like I can move it inside the frame. So it's treating it a lot like an InDesign picture. So I can get this zoom level box here, just like normal. These all look like they're pictures. Let's see if I can do anything with any of the vector files. It says it's a linked document. And the link is probably, oh, look, here we go. I thought that the link probably wasn't going to work, but it looks like it is working. And I have access to all of the different vector pieces of this as an embedded document. So a lot like a smart object or embedding an actual Illustrator file. But I don't have to open it in anything else because, of course, if any publisher is fully able to handle anything that's vector. If I wanted to edit, I could even switch to the designer persona and edit that vector. And of course, let's just say make changes, hiding that, and then close my embedded file, and there's the changes right there. Wow. So that's great. That is basically just as much as we could hope for, I would say. So down here, it looks like I have some placeholders. And those are still there. And yeah, looking, it's looking pretty good. So that is how you would open up an IDML file in Affinity Publisher. And so you would be able to take in a file that somebody gave you from InDesign, as long as it's an IDML file and not an INDD file. And then you would be able to edit it. You'd be able to make changes to it. 
but I'm pretty sure that if we save it, we would have to save it as something else. See what happens. And it saved it as a .idml.af pub. So it is not saving out an IDML file, which is what I expected. Um, so it can open them, but looks like it cannot go back. And if we choose an export, we also do not have that option. So you aren't going to be able to export to InDesign the other way. And so InDesign won't be able to open files from Affinity Publisher, so you can't go back and forth. But Affinity Publisher will be able to open up things from Adobe InDesign. So if people send you files, ask them to send them as IDML files. And the best thing really is just have them package it together so that you get all the assets and everything with it and then you should be able to handle those files. So that is good news for those of you who have to work with people who are still using Adobe InDesign. And it's a big step forward for Affinity Publisher and the Affinity Suite in general. So I'm excited about that. Uh, this has just been a quick video here just to see how that worked. Remember, if you are interested in Affinity Publisher, I do have a couple of courses up on Skillshare and I link to those in the description of this video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.